Welcome, everybody, to this episode mm-hmm. of the Board and Scale podcast. It has been a little bit, but thank you for your patience and your time. We've uh, had some issues that needed to be resolved in my, you know, with my house. We are they're on the way to being fixed, and so I don't feel as worried about having guests over in my melting home. <laughs> Should have been Bluey's dad for Halloween. Me? Me. Oh. Bluey's dad? Yeah. Should have get it. Should have been Bluey. Yeah. That's not his dad. Her dad. Yeah, it is. Her dad's name is Muffin or something. Well, I know it's not. I know that's not the dad. Anyways, <laughs> we're here to talk. And we're actually, all three of us are here. Me, Seb, Dueno, and Gavondrius. And we have some things that we're going to talk to you today about. But I don't have the list of them. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Board and Scale Podcast. Battle of the Games. Board and Scale's first ever snake video. Another vendor spotlight. At the Penguin's the only one with any character. What you're likely to hatch when you mix certain genetics. You know I don't play right. right, 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 right. So we'll do it live. But first, let's do our... Oh, yeah. One month Obviously, recap. Dang, has it been that long? I forgot oh, about the I think the night. last time... Was the show, no? Was the show. Yeah, the live show. The live show, yeah. which was approximately a month ago. Well, because we well we released we released the the video that we recorded before the show, after the show. Yep. So there is another one from behind the table here. But, but yeah. it's been a while so. since we gathered for the recordings. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to go over our highlights first, as is tradition. And we're going to start with Dwingo. Oh. Gotcha. Okay. Ha ha. Bluey. We, I've been on I've been on a I've been on a two player kick, recently, with a lot of two player games coming out. Mm. You know, we've got Kelp, we've got Pagan, we've got Mythic Mischief, and we've got my weekly highlight or highlight. <laughs> uh, super cool game called Ironwood. Oh, I've been. Oh, dude. Did that, you back that one? That game is so fucking cool. You have the the like the Kickstarter or whatever. There's only one. There's only one. It's only that edition. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is it looks. Did really you back cool. it? No. Okay. I was about to say is like I didn't back it in large part because there was nothing exclusive. No reason to back it, unfortunately, other than like supporting the creator and all that good stuff. But getting to play it first behind the other 80 games I have on my shelf. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, you don't yes. really have to justify it, dude. I also don't want to pay $30 in shipping or perhaps more. Yeah. When it'll hit shelves at the same time, you know. It's like Well, we were talking about talking about this last was it yesterday? 2 days ago? It was Thursday. Hmm? It was recent. Yeah. Your your um I don't know, was it I don't know, we've a couple of us been talking about the point the um Printed Meeple. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, the Printed Meeple is a local game store here in San Antonio. They have a membership thing. And if you join the membership, you get a pretty good discount. It's 30%. Like 25 to 30. Yeah, 30% off of everything, including their brand new game, Ironwood, which is pretty cool that they just also, hey, you're a member. And discount's a discount. What were you saying about what they normally get in stock? They get. Usually they get new Kickstarters in and it always just happens to be the ones that I'm like, oh, I just missed it, but they got it. So that's cool. And they always usually get the deluxe slash Kickstarter versions of those games. Yeah. And the add-ons and stuff. Yeah. It's it's pretty cool because it, like for a, for a local store, they're you know because they're brick and mortar, so they have the right usually to get the uh, the retail pre- uh, pledge. And I'm going to be honest; I have no idea how much cheaper retail pledges are uh, for 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 those folks. It'd be really neat to know if they if they ever would share that information at some point. But then that gives them the ability to still give their discount, right? Um, so you as a as you want to pay you know, you want to patronize you know um, printed meeple, right? You want to be able to get a stuff from them. Uh, so this is kind of like a win-win for everybody. So from so, I've seen a few comments in like forums on and on BGG or like Reddit, or whatever, where <clears throat> I like designers, publishers have said, usually, a retail discount 
is pretty significant. Mm-hmm. Like they're paying, you know, they're, they're the like the the publishers or whoever is like making the game yeah. barely makes anything, off if anything, of off of retail sales. It's more of a good faith. Thank you for wanting to distribute the game, right? We want more people to be able to get it. So we want you to, if you're buying in bulk, be able to get as many copies as you can to distribute, right? Sure. Helps them with numbers and sales and stuff. Like, hey, we gave out this many to stores and stuff. Yeah. So it's like it's from what I've seen, it's mostly like a good faith relationship between the the stores who want to sell them at a reasonable price now and that's, the makers who want to get them out there. That's probably specifically for probably like smaller board game companies on crowdfunding yeah. rather than like larger companies, I'm assuming, who are still doing that space. Yeah. Okay. Like Simon, who they don't care. I'm sure they don't, yeah. So tell us about the game. It is two-player war game. Y'all call it that. Um, it's the old Avatar story, blue people. One people, one one player is the woodwalkers, the, the native people of the forest, and then the trees. <laughs> and then you have the ironclad, who are the metal people who come through and they are like mining for crystals and trying to build their forges and stuff like that. And the, the woodwalkers, uh, uh, they don't take too kindly to that. Mm -hmm. And it's very asymmetric. Like, yes, you have the same actions, but all of the actions that you do are different and they work different. So like for the different, like movement. Yeah. yeah. So like, like movement, the woodwalkers, they move individually. They move, they can spread out. They can like flank and stuff like that. The ironclad move as one in big groups. And like um, the the production is awesome. The yeah. art is amazing. Yeah. It reminds me of like a graphic novel. Like all of the cards are sick. And like there's not a lot of duplicates in the cards. Mm. So you've got this deck of like, Almost all cards are different, and like the the woodwalkers, their components are wooden. The ironclad, their components are metal. Oh, that's so that's super sick. A sweet little like thematic touch. Yeah. To the components, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Isn't and there some weird mechanism for action taking in the cards in the game? Do I remember um, that correctly? So you play you play a card, you play three cards in the round. Uh, wood plays card, iron plays card, wood, iron, wood, iron. The combat is like, so you play a card to initiate an attack. You pick who you're going to attack, and then you play another card from your hand to do the to do the combat. Mm. And so like each it's the strength. Yeah, each okay, card okay. has a each card has a banner that gives you your attack, your defense, and your domination, which is okay. Like, Who's gonna win that battle? So that card has an action on it that you could take as an action, or you can spend it as a combat. Mm-hmm. And okay. again, almost all the cards are different. So it's like you're throwing away one card, you might n- not see it again for a while. Sure. So it's like, when do you uh, when do I use this for combat? When do I use it for its action? So I assume there's probably a correlation between the strength of the combat and the strength of the action. Mm-hmm. It's also yeah. it's it's thematic too. So like the more so like, hmm, like there's one card that I saw with the Woodwalkers, where like, it's not a very, you can only play it as an as a as a combat card, but it does hella damage mm. when you play it. Um, what else though? It's at first it seems like. When I first played it, it seemed like the woodwalkers are kind of uh, like they're weak. Yeah, but as you're playing, it's like they are they keep coming mm. and like they keep coming and they're moving all over the place and just accumulating and swarming. Yeah, so like what the ironclad people have to do is they have to build three forges on the map. The the woodwalkers have to find a totem that's somewhere on the map that the ironclad doesn't know Mm. they'll take it and then they have to run off with it off of the off of the board so it's like if the woodwalkers get enough people 
You don't know where where they're going. One, you don't know where it's going to be, and two, it's just like they're just going to keep like poking, beating you down, man. It's it's wild because it's like, yeah. Oh, so do you think? Did you get to that point with your first game with the Woodwalkers, or did it? Do you think that like if you were to if you had two people who were playing and one person had not played before, the other one had. Would you make the player who'd played before the Woodwalkers because it takes a little bit more experience, or is it just like, hey, I didn't get it for the first, I didn't, I didn't feel strong for the first half of the game, but by the time it mattered, I knew I was strong. I think it's just how you play them. I don't think one is like more a little more complex than the other one. Okay. It's just how do you play it? I'm like, just thinking like kelp, like yeah, it was. I think we played it the one time we played. I think we played it the best way possible because you had read the rules, I hadn't. And you gave me the octopus, and the octopus was objectively easier mm -hmm. based on what I observed you trying to navigate through. I was like, mm, yeah, this is the, the octopus is objectively easier to understand the basics. There's probably more strategy that I missed that mm -hmm. I just didn't get to play with. But um, if I were to play that game with another person who had never played before, I would absolutely give them the octopus. So just curious if you did the same thing. No. It's just it's just one of those things where it's like is that a chip theory game by the way no no, no. Mm -mm. I don't know why I, you why just I you that. have to there play are no chips in it you have to yeah. play them you just have to play it like I don't know I don't know how to explain it's just it. different no but it's it doesn't it's not like hey if you don't understand how this these these guys play you know if you don't have a, a little bit of extra depth of the strategy and understand how this game is going to unfold if you haven't seen it unfold you won't know what to do if the game forces itself upon you to be like oh, okay cool i can kind of figure this out at least part way through the game then it's probably not unbalanced right but if there's like a strategy that's like not obvious for success right mm -hmm. then that would be like where it'd be like all right hey like you're gonna play the iron people first I'll play the forest, you know, yeah. so it's you can see what I do with it. And then next time you play, you can play either one because you'll be even at that point. Something else that's cool is that each faction has three base cards that never go away. Mm -hmm. When you play them at the end of the round, they come back to your hand and they're very much like three cards where the things that you have to do are on those cards. So you always, so have it's not like you need a lucky draw and be uh -oh. like, this hand I build a forge. Yeah. There's a there's a move a drill, attack, build a build a forge, and then the woodwalkers have like a discover, which is find their totem. Okay. Yeah. And then a move and an attack. And so you have the okay. critical actions for each roll mm -hmm. always. That's yes. pretty, pretty neat. <laughs> what was it? What was the game that we played? Age contrived, where you could upgrade one of your things and you could upgrade away an, an ability. <laughs> Because you're like, I can never do this again. I just upgraded it away. And yep. it's like it's not anywhere else on, the, on your board. And it's like, oh, that's kind of terrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Sweet. Yeah. Really cool. Yeah. I think I saw the prototype like however many years ago at PAX, and they had chips, which I think which is why oh, I asked. Okay. Yeah, I don't remember who makes it. I don't either. I've never heard of him. No. I don't remember. I thought but it was he likes your game. Yes. I thought it was somebody who had at least heard of it before. It's really, it up. it's really cool. It's Iron it Man. is brutal though. Well, like, actually, actually, Kevondrius, it's your turn for your highlight. Oh, you know what? I'll go while he looks yeah, it up. Yeah, bitch. So my <laughs> my highlight is actually a game that we bought. Mind Clash. Mind Clash. Yeah, yeah. which is a, a that's relatively weird that you like popular. a Mind Clash game. Really? Why? Dragarian. Yeah. Set that's right. Up. Oh, that's right. Septima. That's right. Septima, Voidfall, Perseverance. Yeah. Anyways, my highlight is a game that Dwayne hasn't had the opportunity to hate yet. Uh, it's called Menifer, made by Little Nova. And we bought it and have played it three times in the span of like six days of owning it. Three and a third. And it's just really cool. We're actually in the middle of a play during this recording. Um, but Dwayne has other obligations to attend to. So moving on. But yeah, uh, Menifer is a game where you're in Egypt. Um, you're built. You're uh, visiting the houses of life that are in the game. You're app apprenticing. Crap, I forgot. 
You're doing a bunch of Egyptian You're stuff. You're doing a bunch of stuff in Everything Egypt. Everything you've ever, like, think of any Egyptian word or phrase, and that's it. There's there's sarcophagi, there's canopic jars, there's sphinx, there's pyramids, there's scarabs, there's onks. But what do they call the onks? Hekka. Hekka? I don't know what that yeah. means. Whatever. It's literally, yep. Yep. there's a giant obelisk. Yep. You're trading up everything. the river. You're you're moving up the obelisk, building pyramids, embalming mummies, carving sphinxes, and worshiping in houses of life and doing offerings. I don't know what it is about the game. It's very uh, oh designed by the same guy, uh, German P. Milan. I'm sure I butchered that, but he designed Bitoku as well, which we also really like. It has the same kind of action system, where you essentially have three slots of stuff. And you get to use those slots three times or those things three times. Um, and in this case, you can send a guy, you can move a guy um, from the spot you sent him to uh, to the next spot, and you can replace the action that you used to get another one. If you look it up, you'll see it's pretty it's pretty easy to understand. But we've been really enjoying it. There's a lot of different ways to win. It's it's kind of a point salad game, but depending on because it's very it's very varied with the objectives that come out with what are called contracts that earn you points between eras those are all varied every single time the actions that you start with are varied every single time and so it just i, I really like the amount of variance in the game and that they're pretty much going to always be different games and it's got extra players not player setup but a very simple i don't want to say bot but mechanism that helps fill spots in games with less players so that it doesn't just get easier with less players. You have kind of a randomized spot blocker or whatever, but that's my highlight. It's really cool. Check it out. You know, you saying that you've played it like three times in, in a week and I'm staring at your uh, 10 by 10. We're going we're gonna to ignore that. <laughs> the 10 by 10, <laughs> the 10 by 10 has been sacrificed. <laughs> you got two months. I don't think it's you're not gonna happening. You could you could speed run it. We have Kanban up there, which actually is. How many times could we play Kanban in one day? We've played it a few times. We've played it at least five times this year. Yeah. But there's some other stuff up there, like I think Barcelona's up there, which Barcelona. that one just, just bought an expansion for it. We did, and and I like Barcelona. It just we played it like four times within like two weeks, yeah. and then we're like, we have new stuff and and other stuff happened, and now it's just kind of in the back of our mind, you know. But now we have the new expansion, Passage de Gracia. Yeah, let me try that one. It'd be cool. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, how many times do you need to play or want to play a game like back to back to back? Where you're like, I'm good with it. I'm comfortable. I got a, I got a good couple plays, and if it sits on the shelf for a year, you're still feeling okay about it. Yeah, yeah. Four to five seems like a pretty good number. Yeah. Um, like I'll for I, my my highlight of the day, kind of speaks to that, and that's Endeavor Deep Sea. Um, we've only played it a couple times, and I want to play it a few more times. Um, but like I deliberately left it at home today. Uh, Cause there are a couple newer games that I haven't tabled yet. And I'm like, I read the rules and I want to read them up and, and get them on the table. Yeah. Um, and I know we'll get back to deep sea at some point. Um, but deep sea. That's Endeavor. a game that me and Kenzie really like too. So yeah. Endeavor deep sea, uh, phenomenal game. Um, I think I big, I mentioned it a little bit during the live podcast in contrast to <laughs> AEG's um, uh, undergrowth as far as, uh, economically, not economically, ecologically focused or, or um, um, uh, materials, packing materials, right? The box and the design and everything. So uh, when I got this, when I got it in, um, you know, it's it had a like a thick, um, almost like a butcher paper sheet around the box um, for protection. Um, and then it has like wads of it. No, no, like it was like like literally like folded oh, up in layered? nice butcher paper. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, and I think there may have been like a little bit of tape on it or whatever. So it was like it's something that's I don't know if it's wa- if it was I can't remember if it was waxy or whatever, but enough protection. Parchment paper. They yeah. were baking it. Well, just enough to like protect it from the elements. Yeah. Right. Um. So that if the outside box got wet or something like that, you weren't gonna have any trouble yeah, with it's it. It's not porous. Yeah. But all the components, everything on the inside is either wood or you know different types of cardboard and whatnot so like even those like the player trays and stuff they're that like recycled cardboard recycled cardboard type stuff or whatever yeah um and so everything is is paper products um but it's still a really 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 nicely designed like the components are all really good 
So there's no point in it where you're like, oh, I feel like we sacrificed a lot for the environment. Um, <laughs> which, you know, I complained about last time when we did the live one. Uh, but, you know, like, hey, this is an example, right? This is an example of, like, how you can make a game really, really good quality and still make it, you know, uh, friendly to the environment. Yeah. So... Um, which is a which is a kudo, which is good. Um, but gameplay is phenomenal. It's a lot of fun. Um, a lot of variants in there too. Yeah, the, the different um, starting scenarios. Yeah, there's I don't know how many there are even. Um, there's probably something like 10, 10 plus different starting scenarios, um, and then basically determines how you're going to set up the board, uh, the starting board, and then your additional objectives for like how you're going to try to play the game, like how you're going to score additional points, um, and you know. The the different the factions all are basically the same, um, but they're fun because it gives you that 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 perennial problem like do I want color or do I want symbol, yeah, um, and um, you know all of the different specialists that you can bring out like how you bring them out is going to be different every time, uh, again especially to, based on what the objectives are for the round, um, so yeah uh, we've only had a couple plays but they've both been really fun um, looking forward to playing it a little bit more. Yeah. All right, and that's the highlights. With that, we'll move on to our first topic. So <clears throat> I think I've had a revelation. Um, I forecasted it in the in the conversation, and then you had your question that you were going to follow up with. Okay. So <clears throat> I get all of my board game sleeves from Mayday Games. Uh, I do that pretty much exclusively. Um, the only time I get uh, any other sleeves is if it's an all-in uh, type deal from a crowdfunding. Specifically for a game. Yeah, and, and I only do that when it's a, not a choice. Yeah. Uh, if I have a choice, I won't get their sleeves. The reason being is because the reason I do everything for Mayday is that if all of my games are sleeved by the same company, if I ever have sleeve breakage or anything like that, I know exactly. I have probably ha I may even have replacements available on hand already, leftovers, yeah. or um, you know, I can order more if I need to. They're also good quality, um, the premium ones, and they're also affordable. They also usually run a 30% discount, like two to three, four times a year or whatever, which brings me to my point. Um, I have a, tr I have a tracker for all of my games, like <laughs> what I need. So, Cause when these, when these sales come on, I'll be like, Oh man, which, which games am I going to sleeve? And I sat down and look at my, there's a, there was a sale this last weekend. And I went, sat down to look at my stuff and there was like three games. And it was basically like some cleanup stuff from Viticulture, worm span. And I think one other game. And uh, I was like, Oh, I should go look at my games and see which ones I want to sleeve. And I stared at them for a long time. And then I came to the like the very sobering realization that, you know, I, I started one of these ago. Like I started pulling boxes off the shelf. I'm like, oh, like maybe I'll sleeve harmonies. Cause I'm like, it's a great game and I want to preserve yeah. the cards and they're pretty. I'm like, Coruscant's like the the foiling, they're beautiful cards. I'm like, I'd like to preserve that. And then I started looking at the some of the boxes and I'm like, Boxes and Cortison's not going to hold sleeves. It's not going to hold foiled or uh, sleeved cards. Yeah, um, not good ones at least. Nope. And then uh, just a couple different things where I was like, "Well, these bo this box isn't going to work, and this isn't going to work." And then I was like, well, I'm, I, "I like this game, but uh, harmonies." I'm like, I, feel like, "I think it costs like twenty five dollars." Yeah, something like that. I'm like, dude, if I play this game so much that I wear the cards out, I'll just buy it again. Yeah, you've gotten the value of the game, right? And so I had the. I think I ca I came to the realization. I was like, look. If a game isn't a deck builder, if it's a deck builder, I'm still sleeping the shit out of it. <laughs> um, but if a game doesn't objectively benefit from being sleeved like a deck builder, or in my opinion, games with significant numbers of cards that need to be shuffled at the beginning of the game, a la Ark Nova, I think I'm at the point where I'm not just not going to shuffle. I'm not going to sleeve them anymore. Do you sleeve? I think I can. I always. I never remember. Not as much, but yeah. Did you? Was it like the beginning when you were collecting? You were like sleeves, cool. Like when you find out about sleeves, you're like, I'm gonna do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's pretty much us too. We're having the trouble now where we didn't think in the future, and I was like, ooh, this would be a cool color for this game. <laughs> so we bought a color <laughs> of a certain type of sleeve that I can't even remember now. I think they're game genetic sleeves, but yeah. Regardless, cannot find the the color. Yeah. Like the right color for the cards. So like I want to play the expansion. Can't play the expansion. Yeah. You have to decide to unsleeve everything and then re sleeve it or not, or mm -hmm. however you're gonna approach it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Um, but it's also the box thing, where it's like, oh, this isn't gonna, this isn't gonna fit Siege cards. Yeah. So I'm just not even gonna worry about it. I mean, like you said, deck builders are good about it because they're like, people you're probably gonna, gonna probably see this. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, I don't think I've. Personally, I don't think I've seen a deck builder that won't fit sleeved cards. I can't think of a single one. Star Realms. <laughs> they <laughs> definitely take Unless it. you have the mega giant box. Okay, if you just... <laughs> you're right. If you just buy the basic pack, yeah, like the 80-card pack, like yeah. the basic thing, you are correct. It's like your your turn is, I make $3, I shoot you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's not a lot of there's not a lot of depth in the base in the base set or even in the base for Colony Wars. The first but also, expansion for it. this is a personal thing for me with games like Harmonies or Courtesans. I don't think I would sleeve them anyway, even if they did fit them, because I personally like matte sleeves. Oh, yeah. So if I throw them on, it's gonna like it's gonna kill the dull, vibe. dullify the yeah. Color. yeah. Not a right. That's not a word, but we'll go with it. Harmonies. Also, I, I, I thought I was like, I'm pretty sure you actually could fit them in the box. There's plenty of room, I think, in the box. I, again, for the price part, I was like, uh, it's not. It's, why am I spending another ten dollars, five, ten dollars, or whatever it's going to be to sleeve this um, when I could again just get new ones? Or, but the other, the, the reason I didn't, the the final reason was is because in harmonies you place the cubes on the cards. And that's just enough, depending on how flat and how tight the sleeve is. Yeah. Sometimes you have just a little bit of a bubble or whatever, and it doesn't sit quite. And I'm like, honestly, I don't think I would like that. I want the cube to sit directly on the card. I don't want anything in between there. I think it'll be just a little bit cleaner, a little bit, you know, like I, this is very persnickety here, I understand. No, but, I get it. The know, cube is also just on the edge. Not, right? And like the slope of the sleeve. Yep. Right? Because it lifts a little bit when you put the card in there. Yeah. Maybe that the cube will just fall off, and that's kind of exactly it oh. and even if you really wanted to like if you really wanted to sleeve them if it's just like a cardboard like slot insert you just throw it away yeah and I'll, that's true i have mm. i have thrown away an absurd number of uh well-meaning well-intentioned inserts mm -hmm. to accommodate uh sleeved cards and there's definitely now a version of like, this version of me right here right now is wondering like, oh man, how many of those games could have just not been sleeved and would I have been okay? Like I'm pretty sure I'm not sleeving when well, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sleeve Wormspan. I don't think. Mm. I haven't even played it yet still. Yeah. Unfortunately. That's crazy. Yeah. I thought you had <laughs> no, I've only played it. it once. You were supposed to teach it to us one day and then yeah. you said, Never mind, I can't Do go. Do you have a copy? Yeah. yeah, right there. Right on top of Wingspan. Oh yeah, it is. And, I like it. And it's with here. Birdwatcher. Birdwatcher. Yeah. I've played Birdwatcher a bunch of times. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna unsleeve Apiary, the small pack of the the seed cards, because oh yeah, when when I got the expansion for it, They're, they now sit just high enough in the box that creates a significant enough lid, an additional lid left. There's no way to avoid it because they gave you a bunch of new player mats, mm. and the player mats there's no room for them. I'm like, can I, I tell you? I, I love the addition, but, like, come on, man. Give me another centimeter on the box. I'm upset that we sleeved Ark Nova because if you put all, if you <laughs> back them all up, that deck is, like, this tall, right? Yeah. So we have three separate stacks that are, like, this tall. Each yeah, instead. but this goes to, I think this goes to your question, right, that you wanted to ask us. <clears throat> yeah, so Ke um, Kev said, I forgot exactly what he said, but... I took it as him saying that sleeves, that putting the sleeves on cards helps him shuffle larger decks of cards. Ark Nova being a, the a extremely large deck. Prime example, right? In my mind, with my hands that are probably developing arthritis, I guess, they make shuffling cards. Look at that. <laughs> it, makes shuffling, it makes shuffling cards harder. It, to me, it's easier to shuffle unsleeved cards. And so it was a question that I asked that I'd like to you know, get more elaborate answers because I had them do a preliminary yes or no just to kind of see what the vibe is. Um, and, and, and before we answer, oh. do you as the viewer, pretend he didn't, he didn't hear him say that, do you as the viewer perf uh, think that, in your opinion, sleeved cards are easier or harder to shuffle? Yeah. Did you Let actually us know finish? what you think. <laughs> I did finish. Let us know what you think. Um, and now we will answer. 
So, no. Do you, okay, Dwayne, we'll start with Dwayne. First. I think I think it is harder. I think it does make it a little more difficult. The amount okay. of times I've shuffled sleeved decks and they just fucking spill out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess like yeah, just cut the deck in half and shuffle twice. What is it? What do you mean? Cut the deck in half and shuffle twice? What like, does that mean? Like if it's like that, like if the, if the deck is like that, just cut it in half, and yeah, it makes it easier. And but do what? How do you? Because this goes to methods too. Because I'm sick of I'm sick of like trying to make it all slide in. I bridge shuffle cards with sleeves. That's crazy. Kevin hates it, <laughs> but I grab them. <laughs> I grab them by their sides and I go. <laughs> literally the reason you like have so how do you how do you 75 do you do, of the reason do you do the stack and, and yeah i st- i stack shimmy and then shimmy but if it's a if it's a how many sleeve cards am i doing if it's a deck Arc, that's just like arc nova just arc nova arc nova is like the oh and brass if it's a deck that's black. like that tall it's fine i'll slice it in half and then just shuffle two like a quick like a hand a hand yeah a hand shuffle because I can't do an entire I don't thing. care they're just gonna blow up I don't care about the size of the deck of the deck anymore I'm splitting it into where I can hold grip like this many of them in each hand and I bridge shuffle them it's crazy if there's less than this or just this no even this I'll split and bridge shuffle and also sometimes depending on them they they can they can stick a little bit That's not really shuffling. I can do this. This is literally the best form of shuffling you can possibly do. No, it's literally fine. Look, like that. Look is at that. Almost a fifty. Look at that. Mix. He just crunched him up. He's got to. He's got to do this. Fifty-fifty mix. It's that little split. It's that little spread at the bottom, right? When it hits there, that's perfect. No, if you bridge shuffle, you never even get the scraping. You just. There's no scraping. That's why you. You, you just gently pull, and then you you fan the bottom, and then let them drop. Dude, you got that's such a that sounds like a like a Dude, this is crazy so technique. Easy. This is so easy. I wish, I wish we could get a we could get a deck of cards numbered one through a hundred, and we'll shuffle for fifteen seconds. You shuffle your way, I shuffle mine, and we'll see which one comes out with more cards separated. Filled, separated. So, so you want uh, basically an, like a number that is adjacent to its previous, previous like or if former. If you if you're one, two, and three are still next to each other, negative points. You get negative points. Yeah. Bridge shuffling will win for sure. Zero percent chance. For Zero. Sure. Zero. And it's easier. It's quicker. You no, it's you don't got to do that fancy pants. The cards. You don't got to do the fancy pants thing, dude. If I play a game enough to where the cards are damaged, honestly, it's a point of pride. At this point, I have too many games. They all get played like once a year if they're lucky, right? Three, four times if they're our favorites. I mean, Dominant Species is my favorite game, and I've played it once. I have definitely come to that. That was another part of the realization, too, was that d- despite all of my best intentions, if a game gets played more than five times total, total in its entire lifespan on my shelf, that will be a good life for that board game. Um, yeah, the best of the best, the top 10, 20 will get played more than that. Um, and some I'll just keep around because I'm like, mm, this is new. I, I enjoy it. And maybe there'll be an Feels opportunity, a niche. right? Yeah, exactly. You know, if it doesn't get, you know, replaced by another game that does its mechanisms differently or more interestingly long enough for me to lose interest in the old one or whatever. Um, yeah, it's a, that was definitely a part of it too. And being like in five plays, 10 plays, 15 plays, I am not going to, ruin these cards even by bridge shuffling them without sleeves on but yeah. i still think again i mean we've we kind of hit it on like it's i mean i prefer shuffling sleeved cards under any circumstance it is easier to me and that's probably in large part because like i grew up like my board gaming early board gaming or gaming in general besides warhammer was magic right so mm. you just shuffle all the time and like point and shuffling a lot and shuffling well mattered because you know you had to make sure your deck you know you're you weren't going to draw six lands in a row um <laughs> so and like a large game yeah i've got no problem taking this st- you know taking the stacks out breaking them up 
you know, shuffling them, putting it down, shuffling the next one, cutting them into, you know, quarters, mixing and matching them. That whole process is just <laughs> That's quicker, so much. but it's so much quicker because you can't, you still can't bridge shuffle that entire stack. Not always, no. Right? But no, you, you do it's, bigger stacks. And again, I can, <laughs> I can mix those cards like that shuffling process, way more times than you can in the process of doing a bridge shuffle. No, because you just do one bridge, one bridge shuffle, move on to the next. Dude, yeah, that's not, that's not, that's not random enough though. You need to shuffle it yeah, more than fine. that. Depends on the game, Depends for sure. The game. There's Nova, some games. It's fine. <laughs> Yeah, Ark Nova probably is. That's a good example, but like I'm trying to think of other games where you're Clank? like Base Clank. I mean, I've only played it once. Oh. I play Clank a lot of times. Yeah. I don't know. The other thing too is is that I mean, so this goes to deck building games, but deck building games that have or any game that has a core set of cards that get used every time. The starter cards, yeah. Yep. I will probably still try to I'll probably focus on shuffle or um Sleeving those because I've seen in the wild what happens when base cards get played with over and over and over and over and over again when the other cards don't. And you can literally, if you're like, oh, should I draw a card or gain a life? And you look at the top of your deck and you're like, that's a base card. No, <laughs> you, just, life. you just, just, you just, you just leave, you just leave the starters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you stole it from me. I, that's that's, crazy. Did we think of that at the yeah. same time? Is that why we looked at each other? Yeah. Touch that's fingers. crazy. Touch your fingers together. Wee, 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 wee. It's like a scary movie or whatever. <laughs> We're not so different after all. If you've seen that movie, it's the one that makes fun of signs. There's they pay, like six of they them. They're the making fingers. another one now, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Signs? No. Oh, <laughs> scary, scary movie, movie yeah. six, right? The, the Wayne's Bros are reuniting. Yeah. What horror movies are they gonna make fun of? They're gonna like Con- Conjuring for sure. The Nun. I guess. Yeah, I don't think the nun one. was too popular. You think enough. they're gonna mess around with the terrifier? No, no. Highest grossing. No, because it's already highest, kind of a. It's highest, kind of a it's campy already. High, yeah. It's a parody of itself. I feel like. <laughs> Conjuring. It, terrifier is the One Punch Man of horror movies. Yeah. Uh, I feel like Conjuring. Maybe the Annabelle. I mean, that's Rose literally the entire. All that stuff is the same series. It's all of the, the same Warrens. universe. Yeah, La it's Llorona. all the Warrens. Gotta get a. What, what? Do they call her? Which one? La Llorona. I don't know what you're talking about. Gotta, it's get, a, gotta it's get, a, get some. It's a it's diversity a Spanish, in there. Mexican with the, with the folklore. Yeah. La Llorona. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's I a woman who cries. They've got Bob Esponja. <laughs> Bob Esponja. <laughs> you barely got that out, dude. <laughs> Dwayne is really having fun with the Spanish pronunciation of Spongebob. <laughs> Calamardo. <laughs> Ay, Calamardo. <laughs> oh, my God. Patricio. <laughs> oh, man. Dude, fucking uh, eels and escalators, man. They made that into a board game. Eels. Eels and escalators. Is that, right, right, is that shoots and ladders? Yeah, basically. Right before the Krabby Patty came out. That's <laughs> crazy, bro. You could have a SpongeBob day. <laughs> That's funny. Oh man, I had a spo- I used to have a. I used to own a SpongeBob Life. Dude. Really? Yeah. yeah? Dang. Mm-hmm. Were you Bob Esponja? I I played <laughs> Patrick all the time. Nice. Patricio Estrella. Yeah. Dang. If you got the Spanish Wait. version of it, your life, your whole life would have been Hold different. Hold on. Bobby Sponge. Hold on. What so SpongeBob Life? I'm, if Sandy. I remember correctly, so there's a lot of interesting things that could happen there. Because, like, first of all, like the first choice you make is like, are you going to go to college? So, what does SpongeBob College look like? You no, you work at the Chum Bucket or the Crab <laughs> or the Krusty Crab. I think it was something like that. You work at the Krusty Crab or something else. I don't Mrs. Puff's Boating School. But I how does a, that work for like your, how does that work for like because like the job that like because whether you go to child uh, like whether you go to college or not determines what kind of jobs you're able to get and like which ones have higher income. I don't remember. And okay, so it then what does spo- marriage was, what does marriage look like? Who it, you marrying? It was SpongeBob life. Man. And what about them? You kids? marry Patrick and you have the little clam. <laughs> oh, dude! And you change his clam diapers. Hell, yeah. Can you still this have six kids? This purse is so big and heavy. <laughs> <laughs> that game was messed up. When you think about life, like literally, it was just like, "Hey, man, go to college. You make more money. Yeah. Hey, 
you're getting married, whether you like it or not. Yeah, do you want this game to be hard? You're going to have kids. <laughs> and they had the little the little meeple in the... You need a little stick them in the back of the car. Yeah. Did you have the boat? Was that the car? Boat? Oh, yeah. for You know for what? It might have been a boat. Dude, his car? Heck yeah. <laughs> his car that it lives in the garage that sometimes it's there and sometimes it's not. When they show the back of the pineapple, it's always something different going on back there. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's a garage. Sometimes it's a back door. Sometimes it's sometimes it's just one window at the top. Oh, that thing hasn't rotted yet. I guess not. The no. salt preserving it. The pineapple? Yeah. yeah. Is it's, it actually pineapple? His house? It's, it's made a, of a pineapple. I mean, is it a, actually a pineapple? Oh, you know what? Is it like actually organic pineapple? No. Well, okay. So <laughs> I'm assuming it's like. An aquarium decoration that got dropped in the right. Ocean. There you go. Okay, because I was like, Patrick's a, rock is a rock. also I how big? Because like, he's ass, a sponge, right? I was like, that's a big ass pineapple, yeah, he's, right? He's an actual sponge, yeah, right? So sponge. imagine, like, I assume, like, for context, right, it would be like a, a generally like a Scotch Bright type sponge, right? The size of like your hand, yeah, right. And they're inside an entire pineapple, mm -hmm. right? So if the hand is the reference point for SpongeBob. That pineapple's got to be like this fucking. I mean, big. to be fair, the, the pineapple is two stories tall. So. That's what I'm saying. It's so like, if he is next, this big, it's also sitting next to a right. Like pineapple is gonna be like Easter Island head. Yeah. How big is the How big we're, is the pineapple compared to the Easter Island? It's head? like half its size. Where Calamardo lives. I mean, I that's a, those things are big as shit. So I think it's three stories tall. The pineapple? No, Squidward's house. No, it's only two. I is think, it? Yeah. Upstairs is only his his bath. <laughs> <laughs> this is his bath where they always mess with him. All right, well, I hope I've you enjoyed this SpongeBob conversation. Entire, I've never watched a single entire episode. Oh, I've man. missed out on so much. Don't watch the, the new stuff, though. Yeah, no, it's I'm not, good. I, I saw the, uh, I like glanced and saw that like it was a completely different like 3D animation, and I was like, I never watched it in the first place, but I'm definitely that's it. That's, yeah, that's a different series. Yeah, it's just not. Yeah. Yeah, we don't talk about it. No, I'm good. Anyways. Thanks for joining us on this short episode. We're going to go eat pizza. Leave a and comment. What's your favorite things. pizza? And also, if you're mad that we took a long time, put that in the comments. Name your favorite Motivate us. <laughs> pizza game. Yeah, name your favorite pizza board game. I don't know. I can think of, I don't even think Pick up and deliver one. game? What's, what's the crappy one with the, uh, that's the shape Whoa. of a pizza box? Oh, let's not do that. You yeah. don't like that one? Or you like that one? I'm sure it's a fine game, and we're not going to mention it. See you next time. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>